You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cuz we, we live. We live. It's finally here. We get some organized, legitimate Charlotte Hornets basketball today against the Boston Celtics. The tip is at 1 p.m. You can catch it on WFNZ if you want to listen to it on the airwaves. Appreciate you hopping on with us for this primer. I'm Walker Mail, host of the Lockdown Hornets podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast. That includes YouTube. I'm not going to give you the visuals of me doing the pod. Instead, we're going to put a graphic up there. I don't have Doug. I don't have the software that I'm comfortable with putting a video up there. I've tried it. I fail. It's just not what I do. I'm so radio, man. It's embarrassing, to be honest with you. So hopefully you can still check us out on YouTube if you want to catch us that way. But we are going to do an episode after the game tonight. I just wanted to give you guys some content before the actual game against the Celtics, the first preseason game of the year for the Charlotte Hornets. And then again, we'll give you a recap tonight. I actually have another bonus type of episode. I did an episode with Alex Wolf of the Locked On Knicks podcast. He's already uploaded it, so if you wanted to catch it and just get a sneak peek, you can go to Locked On Knicks and check that out. I am going to upload it on this feed too, so you can just wait for it to show up in your notifications. Go into the archives and then click on it. I'll release that as well, so we're going to give you extra bonus episodes this week to try to get back on track. As Doug's been on vacation, I've had some issues trying to fit everything in as well as just uploading things in a timely manner, but we we should be getting back on track and what better time to do it than this week as the Hornets are set to host the Boston Celtics for or excuse me they're set to play the Boston Celtics in their first preseason game so let's talk about a few things to watch out for one I want to look at what playing group Steve Clifford is going to put together and I don't think what you're going to get at first is certainly going to be the end-all be-all, right? Like, we can have this interest, oh, okay, Steve Clifford is leaning this way or leaning that way about whatever playing group he wants to put together. But Steve did say it's going to take up until the fifth preseason game before he gets a feel on how he wants to divide up the minutes. And he did say that he thinks they have 10 legitimate, that's his words, not just 10 rotation guys, but actually 10 legitimate rotation guys and so it got me thinking all right who exactly are those players so if you go down the list of the 10 that Steve Clifford thinks are legitimate rotation players let's just go down the payroll as listed Gordon Hayward Terry Rozier Kelly Oubre Mason Plumley, LaMelo Ball Cody Martin PJ Washington okay that's seven that I feel very good about based off Steve Clifford's words based off of how these players just actually have gotten run in the past so that's seven then you go down to Jalen McDaniels. I feel good about being in that 10. So that's eight. Dennis Smith Jr., is, is he somebody that you're just so desperate for backcourt depth and he you want him to be that defender? Is that a solid nine? Are you putting Nick Richards in there because of the glowing review that Steve Clifford has given this guy so far? When asked at the coaching luncheon, who is the player that stood out most as far as improving as you've gotten this job or just somebody you've watched tape and maybe were pleasantly surprised about? He keeps telling you that Nick Richards has been very good and even told you he was going to be the backup center as it stands right now. Mason as the one, Nick Richards as the two. So that leaves Mark Williams out. So when you're talking about those eight players first listed, the final two spots, the guys battling for those spots, it's Dennis Smith Jr., it's JT Thor, Nick Richards, Kai Jones, Mark Williams, James Booknight, six other players that, I mean, theoretically could get some playing time. If you want to try to get the easy ones out of here, I just don't think Kai Jones is going to get any playing time. I don't. I know Kai talked about that this offseason. I know he said, I expect to get a lot more run this year. I know he wants that. I mean, Kai did talk about it, and Rod Boone wrote an article about some of those younger players, the last two years, you know, draft picks, and, and Kai was confident that he was going to get some more run. I just don't see it for Kai this season. He was always at risk of being a two-year project. I think that's carrying out to be true. So that means you have five. Well, if you 
completely agree that Steve Clifford is going to roll with Nick Richards. Okay, so that's a solid spot already. Bang, now you're talking about one if you want to lock up those nine. So then it's Dennis Smith Jr., Mark Williams, James Booknight, and JT Thor. I, Doug talked about this the other day, and I think that's what the feeling is for all of the fans, all of the beat writers, all of the people covering the Hornets. It's that Mark Williams ain't going to get this time right now. And again, I thought when the Hornets made this draft pick, I thought not only were they looking at the future of the center spot, I thought they drafted somebody to help them in the immediate term. But remember, they had not hired Steve Clifford yet. They had not hired a coach yet when they went through the NBA draft process. Who knows if Steve Clifford would have gone with Mark Williams at that time. Clifford said all the right things about Mark in the future, but I remember, I mean, I asked him about the immediate return on Mark Williams, and he deflected and talked about this is a team that needs to play with physicality. I think we've seen him in the red jersey where he in the training camp scrimmages where he's been clearly towards the bottom of the hierarchy. So Mark Williams ain't going to be a part of this. JT Thor seems like a Steve Clifford guy. James Booknight's really talented, and he's your highest draft pick among all of the players we talked about, unlike Dennis Smith Jr., but we know what it is with him. He's been a little bit of a journeyman at the age of 24, bouncing around through a few different teams. That's what you have to look at first and foremost. Who are the 10 players getting run? And Steve Clifford did say he hopes that the starters will get some minutes as soon as this first game against the Boston Celtics, but he doesn't exactly know how all of that is going to pan out. Rod Boone did talk about that a little bit, and Steve said, yeah, I haven't even decided yet. He said, quote, I'm going to figure out how to divide the minutes up on the plane after practice to see how everybody feels. And so now they're up there in Boston and he's going to try to figure it out. Um, and hopefully already has as they traveled up there to play their first preseason game. But the 10 legitimate rotation players is what got me. And that's what I want to see. And then I want to see how all of those players will mesh with one another. We'll continue to get you primed for this game. The first one against the Celtics to tip off the beginning of the preseason. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts that includes this week's games bet online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information that includes live betting esports even scores and the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events is bet online that includes the mlb the mma boxing even golf you can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action bet online where the game starts so we've documented we're all looking at who are the 10 legitimate rotation players. And maybe Steve Clifford is just trying to figure out who needs to get that last spot as they go into the regular season. And so things could be misleading. So we've talked about playing time. The other thing is you look at the combinations that you could roll with. Is there anybody that Steve Clifford thinks plays better with another certain player? And he said this, quote, I think the depth of the roster is such that there's obviously different ways that you could go different times playing small. Clifford said there's a lot of guys that play more than one position. So this has been a good stretch to try to look at all of those things. Now, remember, we are here October 2nd on a Sunday. Steve Clifford more than a week ago. Not this past Friday, but the one before that, that was the coach's luncheon that Steve Clifford said, we're going to have to wait a week before we actually start to form our identity. Because during training camp, they were kind of rolling the basketballs out there and said, all right, let's play. You know, they hired some refs, you know, they're, they're playing legitimate basketball. But Cody Martin said it, that they're really just trying to coach themselves right now, that the coaches aren't putting their influence in as much in those sessions and it's really a player's driven practice at this point i don't want to take away responsibility from the coaches but i think you get the idea they're not being overbearing during the transition process as these players start to develop relationships with some of the new coaches on staff speaking of cody martin who talked about how the players are kind of coaching themselves right now he's going to be out for this game hopefully that was misleading talking about the 10 rotation players still solidly in that mix once the season starts but cody is not going to play today against boston he's experiencing left knee tendinopathy again this is according to rod boone of the charlotte observer the expectation for cody though is that he will play at some point during this preseason this move is precautionary after Martin experienced general soreness after ramping activity back up in practice over this week. So 
Uh, Rod Boone said he's hearing it's not expected to be a lingering issue. Everybody else is good to go. So relatively good news as far as the health department goes. Cody Martin not experiencing something that's going to linger this preseason, but he is experiencing something that he is not going to play against the Boston Celtics. So maybe that is some time for Dennis Smith Jr. and or James Booknight to really win some minutes over. And I've talked about this quite a bit. Preseason, that stuff matters for some of these young players. I mean, just think about what it did for P.J. Washington a couple of years back where I thought he was awesome immediately upon entering the league. And it was like, oh, okay, this guy needs to be getting minutes right now. So this preseason will provide Clifford and the staff a better barometer, as Rod Boone puts it, an understanding of which players will coexist better. Because that's what you have to figure out. And of course, not only do you have the minutes trying to figure out how you're going to divide them up, but forming the identity, trying to think of all of the combinations, it, it all gets a lot tougher when you talk about Miles Bridges, who will continue to not be here as his hearing and trial process plays out. By the way, yesterday was the last day for a team to extend a qualifying offer to a restricted free agent. That applies to Miles Bridges. So if the offer is not extended... The player is still a restricted free agent, but the qualifying offer is now voided. They extended a qualifying offer to Miles Bridges, but he didn't sign it. So Miles Bridges is a restricted free agent. He's just not agreed to the qualifying offer. By the way, this applies to Miles, who also just had his hearing continued again for the fourth time. This scheduled hearing is to determine whether there is enough evidence to take Bridges to trial. Rod Boone says that it's not exactly clear, right? So there's a couple of different things there, um, but the evidence that's kind of standard for the continuing process. The new date is scheduled for October 7th for Miles Bridges, so that's five days from now. And maybe then we'll start to get a clearer picture on how long this is going to play out, but... I can't expect Miles Bridges to be back with this team anytime soon and maybe ever. Like, that's the kind of thing that Miles is experiencing at this moment in time. And it kind of speaks to the opportunity there as well for even the established players. Cody Martin's out, Book Knight, Dennis Smith Jr., a couple of other players fighting for some back uh, court duties there and some mop up duty, if you will. But even in the front court, when you talk about established players, trying to make a name for themselves or just show a different skill set they have. That's why I want to look at PJ Washington because Gordon Hayward, we know what it is for him. And if we don't know what it is for him, then it's in the worst way because he is older. And as he gets older, the harder, harder it is to guarantee what he's done in the past, especially with his lack of availability over the last couple of years. So when you're talking about losing some of the downhill scoring that Miles Bridges provides where you did have the improvement of him getting to the free throw line and we know how good of a free throw shooter he is that's something kind of interesting to watch one you know as we talk about PJ we often know how much I love talking about him because really the defensive part of his game offensively we don't know how much responsibility he's going to have putting the ball on the floor playmaking helping out in the miles bridges absence but with pj too he's not a great free throw shooter and that's something maybe overlooked as they try to figure out how to fill the void that is miles's talent on the team when you talk about pj not shooting the free throws well even if he could go to the line a little bit more he's not going to have the same impact once there as miles who shot pretty well and I, I do want to see the guy that well, I think I've been saying PJ's lost 10 pounds this offseason. It's more like 20. So I've been wrong on that. But with PJ and his body transformation, is that somebody that immediately against the Celtics today? You're like, yep, he looks a little different. There's something there now. Offensively, you know, trying to create for others, put the ball on the deck a little bit more as we've seen the Hornets experiment with sometimes. So that's another thing to kind of watch for as Steve Clifford tries to divvy out the minutes and play with everybody's abilities and the last thing i'll wrap up with here as we talk about the different combinations you could go with the one thing i want to see today is just how fast the hornets really are going to play and it doesn't mean this is going to be completely indicative of how they play in game one of the regular season but is steve clifford coming out immediately and trying to play with that fast pace and i saw this conversation on twitter after matt moore hardwood paroxysm at hp basketball tweets about the hornets a lot yeah great nba follow you guys probably know him he put out there 
Steve Clifford has never coached a team that was above 18th in pace. And he quote tweeted Will Kunkel of Queen City News, who tweeted, Steve Clifford says the Hornets style of play will be fast and upbeat. The style of play will be similar to the last few years. That's when Matt put out there that Clifford has never coached a team that was above 18th in pace. He also said, I'm a big Steve Clifford guy. I just don't think coaches can necessarily switch up identities that easily. He's going to want them to defend, and defensive teams typically play slower. And that's all been true. It's been a legitimate question about Steve Clifford, whether he could employ the the same style as Borrego did last year where that was the first year we really saw James Borrego and the upbeat desire, the transition desire, come to fruition. And LaMelo Ball immediately is a one-man fast break. LaMelo wants to play fast as possible. That's going to help Steve Clifford transition into this new identity, quote-unquote. But the other thing is, I mean, we've seen Steve Clifford have fast players before. Now, when you had Al Jefferson... That one year where he made all NBA, clearly your offense is going to be predicated on dumping it to him in the post and just him being a technician down low going to work. Just awesome offensively, right? You had MKG that year too. So MKG helping you defensively. We know how good of a teacher Steve Clifford is on that end of the floor. It's what his calling card is. And the Bobcats teams were typically good defensively. You bring in Nick Batum earlier on, right? I know people don't want to hear anything positive about Nick Batum, but there's a reason he got that contract. He was good for this team before eventually he got paid too much and then fell out of favor with the organization. But even kind of looking at that, MKG, hell, What were we talking about his best offensive ability being, right? Maybe some trash points, being an excellent rebounder, but also in transition. That dude was so athletic. That was the best way to get MKG involved offensively. Nick Batum was a good transition player. We know Kimba Walker could play fast. That guy was as quick as they came at the point guard spot in the NBA. Nobody is LaMelo, right? Like LaMelo, when he grabs the ball, immediately looks up the floor. Not really what Kimba was doing. Kimbo was going to look for his own shot. Nick Batum kind of did that. But I mean, you know, Nick Batum, LaMelo, Ball, completely different players. LaMelo, certainly a better guy and going to be a superstar in this league. So you, you don't have that elite transition player that LaMelo Ball is now when you look back at Steve Clifford's history. But you did have some guys that could play out in the fast break. And yet still, their identity was to play pretty slow. Slower than average, at least, if he's never finished above 18. Yes, he's had some players to help you out in transition, but no team has been built for transition like this team's been. And that's where I think the saving grace might come for Steve Clifford's ability to adapt into an offense that we've not seen from him before. LaMelo's going to help any coach start to run up and down the floor a lot faster. And then you mix that in with some of the other younger players on this team. This team was built to run, unlike some of those other franchises he coached. So that's why I will give Steve Clifford the benefit of the doubt here, even if he has had those opportunities. Plus, the game just continues to change so much more since Steve Clifford has been a head coach. And I know he coached in the the three-point era too, right? Like It's not like this is completely foreign, but it's definitely changed since the first go-around for him as the head coach for the Hornets. So I, I, I'd want to see that right are, are we running out of the gate does it look good and, and where will we see them finish in pace if there is that kind of thing measured at the end of the preseason going into their first game all of those things all of those factors I want to see play out that's some of the stuff I'm going to be paying attention to in today's game against the Celtics but it's finally here and Doug and I are going to get together tonight record that podcast we're going to release it on Monday morning for you to also catch up on our thoughts from the first game instead of just giving you this preview, but hopefully you were able to enjoy a primer to get you ready for some Hornets basketball. You can listen to this and before the game one, but also even before the Panthers game who uh, plays at four o'clock. So I thought I would give you guys a little something to listen to. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks as always for joining us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure you check out Locked On NBA as well, your daily 30 minute update on everything taking place within the association. We'll be back with you tomorrow to talk a little bit about what the Hornets did in their first preseason game against the Celtics. So long. Have a great rest of your day.